Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I got another rant for you today, and it is courtesy of the one, the only, Shannon Sharp. But before we jump in, thank you so much for your continued support of our channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Become a member of the Come On Now, the podcast family as we continue to grow this bad boy and get closer and closer to 4,000 subscribers. We thank you so much. Let's jump on in. If you don't recall, a couple months ago, Monica McNutt from ESPN and Carolyn Peck from ESPN gave their take on who they thought the Rookie of the Year was and their created criteria for Rookie of the Year. Monica McNutt, her criteria was the team with the better record will win the rookie of the year. Well, on that day, the Indiana Fever were, I believe, a half game or a game behind the Chicago Sky that day. Because the day before, or two days before, Indiana was ahead of the Chicago Sky. So now, a couple of days later, now she comes out with her take of, well, you know, it'll be the record, team record. Because that's what's most important. Not performance, but the actual team record. So, within a couple of days after that, Indiana has now passed the Chicago Sky. And as you know, by this point, they are well past the Chicago Sky. I believe like five games ahead of them. Is It's five or six. They're 17 and 16. The Sky, I think, is 11 and 20 or 11 and 21. So, there is a large gap between the two teams. So where has Monica McNutt gone? She is dis- she I don't watch first take as much as I used to. I used to watch it almost daily, but because of the Monica McNutts, the Drea Carters, the Chinia Gumakes, and the Carolyn Peck types and, the, and and even Molly Curum who was just becoming nails on chalkboard as she's jumping into conversations when her job is to moderate, not have an opinion on a topic. No one's no one's asking for your opinion, Molly. I hope you understand that. That's why they have experts who actually play these sports or coach these sports on there, and you didn't, and you haven't, so nobody cares what you think. Maybe some people do. But right now, Indiana is 17 and 16. The sky is 11 and 21. They are five and a half games ahead of the Chicago sky. So I stopped watching large parts of first take because of this nonstop narrative that just became honestly aggravating to me because I just got so sick and tired of listening to Stephen A. Smith, not reply, not truly go in. He always, he's never had a problem going in on men, but he won't go in on women. And I obviously know that or think that's probably because he has a fear of saying the wrong thing, people being offended, and then he has other bigger problems. I mean, the man does make like 18 million, 15, whatever million dollars a year. He's looking for a new contract. And I mean, man makes a lot of money. So honestly, he's not risking his paycheck to put these ladies in their place because they're clearly they clearly have an agenda which is why they feel the way they feel. All that said, when you when you really look at it, now you see Stephen A. Smith jumping on his own podcast, and he's going in. He's still not doing it on ESPN, though. He's doing it on his own podcast. Shannon Sharp, who's on. And, yeah, they did have that little spat where Stephen A. Smith made his comments. And Monica McNutt emasculated him publicly, and he had no response because he, if he had responded, he would have been looked at as the bad guy. So she does all that. Now, now I don't know how often she's been on first take since then, but I want to venture to guess it hasn't been very much. And the reason I say that is I haven't seen clips from first take with Monica McNutt in probably two months. I can't remember the last clip of Monica McNutt. We're now in September. 
So this happened probably June, early June around there when they announced the, the, the USA team for the Olympics. And you haven't seen much. I, I haven't seen much of her. I don't know where she is. Maybe she has been on and I've missed it. But there have not been really any clips of her that I can remember seeing on YouTube in quite some time. Needless to say, she's disappeared. Now, is it on purpose? Is it strategic? Or is it because she doesn't want to face the reality of her absolutely ridiculous commentary on Caitlin Clark? And doesn't want to own it. And doesn't want to own what she said. Because per her criteria, her criteria, this is a runaway wipeout. And it's going to be a runaway wipeout. Because it's not going to be a half a game or a, a game. It'll be five to ten games between the two teams. It's definitely going to be at least five games. But it could be closer to ten. So how did that work out for you, Monica? The other one is Carolyn Peck. Now, Carolyn Peck is a former college basketball coach at Purdue. She also coached in the WNBA. and. She, her commentary was based on efficiency. Now, I don't know how she came up with her level, her standard of efficiency. I don't know. And I don't know where it comes from or how you even determine that or if she's using plus. Was it plus minus that she was using? Yeah, I think it was plus minus. <laughs> not stats, not winning, not losing. Her, her 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 criteria was plus minus I think I think it was something like that or it was it was it was efficiency I, I'm I don't even know anymore so let's let's just take a look real quick at the efficiency for Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese uh that's one so Caitlin Clark's per is 18 point Nine and Angel Reese's is seventeen point two. Is that the efficiency we're talking about? Because PER is a ranking system for players for efficiency. As far as I know, as far as I can remember, that was an uh, that's an efficiency standard. Um, let's see where else we can look at something like this. Let's see here. Do efficiency let's take a look at the efficiency category in the on the WNBA website efficiency wise <laughs> all right so that's the per off of basketballreference.com now i'm looking at efficiency on the WNBA website caitlin clark's efficiency rating is the highest for any guard in the WNBA. number one is asia wilson hers is like way over the top 34.8 Nafisa Collier is second at 25.6. Brianna Stewart is 25.2. Neka Agumake is 21.9. John Quell Jones, 21.6. And next on the list is Caitlin Clark at 20.9. She has the highest efficiency of any guard in the league. Number, the second guard is number 10 at Izarika Agumbawale. And then for the next guard, you got to go down to 15 at Sabrina Ionescu at 18.5. Angel Reese's efficiency is 18.9. So again, we have now. Two people who have created two different metrics to determine who their rookie of the year was. And Shannon Sharp gave his opinion on this. So how about you here? Come take a look at this one. Listen to what Shannon Sharp had to say. We got to run the intro. I went to locker room trying to... Seventeen percent of the WNBA's flagrant fouls this season have been committed against Caitlin Clark. Hey, Ocho, yes, sir. Seventeen yeah. percent of the WNBA flagrant fouls have been committed mm -hmm. against Clark. The Chicago Sky were responsible for eighty percent of the flagrant fouls committed against Clark. But you know what, Ocho? It's the great white height. There's nothing, Shannon. You just want to support that white girl. She busting y'all ass. 
Hey, there was a women. I ain't gonna call y'all name. Y'all had a lot to say. Y'all even tagged me. I, why y'all tagging me? Somebody say something to y'all. Y'all tag me. Who that? Who that? I ain't gonna call a name. I ain't gonna get into it. I I I I, I ain't petty like right. that. But hey, lady. When people say things to you, God, I, I don't think you should be what they say, call you all kind of names. Right, right. I don't believe nobody should be called out of the right. names. But I don't know why when somebody address y'all, y'all feel y'all need to tag me. They're, they're addressing y'all. Right. If they want to address me, they would address me. Y'all keep me out of this. Y'all keep me out of this. Y'all said what y'all said, but I'm just trying to figure why y'all lump me in the no, no, they talking to y'all. They talking to me. So what you did wrong? Y'all try to make me, y'all, oh, if you don't, if, if, if you like Caitlin Clark, you got to hate Angel. And if you hate, if you love Angel, you can't say anything good about Caitlin Clark. Y'all can't tell me what the F to say. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say what I want to say. Yeah. Now, back to my originally scheduled program. Caitlin Clark doing a thing on the boat show. Ah, yeah, she had, ah, ah, yeah. ah, she had that cutting up, man. She had that cutting up. Listen, you notice how the season, as the season has gone on, how she gotten a little bit more comfortable? You got I a little thought bit more they, better. These women that know. What about these women that follow that call? I thought they would know that. I thought they would know the way they talk about right. it. One of them coach, they cover the game, they got podcasts, and they cover all these sports. Right. Now all of a sudden, uh, I, I stand. No, 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 no. She's sharp on both sides, yeah. cutting ass left and mm -hmm. right. Yeah, she she playing good ball now. She playing good basketball. Good. She playing. Is that what you say? Yeah, she playing. Yeah, I she hate playing, to see she, she playing great. She playing good basketball. You yeah. listen, make all hands hands hat off to Caitlin Clark. She playing some damn good basketball. She is. She is. She but she's a good player, Ojo. Yep. And if 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 you set aside the fact mm -hmm. that look, people giving her credit, mm -hmm. and I get it, situation and hey. Well, what about all these old heads that did? Bro, what about all the old heads that never got the love and admiration that Michael Jordan got when he came in the league? Right. All right, let's jump in. You heard that. That was a direct message to Monica McNutt, the player, and Carolyn Peck, the coach. He took abuse from them, especially McNutt, on ESPN. So they're tagging him on stuff? That's crazy to me. I, I'm shocked. Is it shocking? Nah, but it's is it but but yeah, they're tagging him on stuff he's telling you. Shannon Sharp told you like it is. Now I wish he would do that as well on first take when he's on ESPN, but I guess he can't do that as well. But that was a direct message to Monica McNutt and Carolyn Peck. You had a lot to say, a lot of things that you came out your mouth two months ago, even when they were ridiculous two months ago. Now they look utterly outrageous. So you were ridiculous two months ago. Now you look like a complete clown. And that's why both of y'all have pretty much disappeared off of anything WNBA related. Because I have not seen Carolyn Peck nor Monica McNutt since the All-Star break. Was McNutt on the All-Star break at the All-Star game? I don't even know. <laughs> Carolyn Peck, I remember being on the, I think she was on the desk. But I haven't heard from Monica McNutt in a minute. They have been invisible. M-I-A. They went AWOL. Absent without leave. Because they are not going to say I was wrong. It's just the way it is. They've been called out by Stephen A., by Shannon Sharp, and they cannot take it. And so what do they do? They take their ball and they leave. And instead of saying I was wrong about this particular topic, they take their ball and leave. Let me know what you think. I want to hear what your comments about Shannon Sharp's commentary. And where the hell's Monica McNutt and Carolyn Peck? Where have they been? Will we hear a response from them? I think I got to go follow them now on Twitter, X, Instagram, whatever, to see if they have a response. Because if they're going to win like Cheryl Swoops has been doing in response to everything, they will have something to say. I hope they do, because this will be fun. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, follow, join our family. Come on now.